Hi, my name is Steve Faulkner. Welcome to Real Magic Review. Today, I'm very excited to review Hector Mancha's The Wondrous World of Pickpocketing. Before I do this review, and this is an important one, so you must watch it from beginning to end, even if I waffle on for ages. Um, before I do it, please check out onlinemagic.co. That's the thing that runs the whole thing. Without that, there is no this. And if you love this, you will love that. Uh, learn from a pro, onlinemagic.co. Um, and uh, <laughs> put myself out a bit there by doing that. Didn't really need to do that, did I? But there you go. Um, and it's got 600 plus, 700 plus videos uploads. We did a live session last night on uh, Cards Across, the concepts of Cards Across, so you can build your own Cards Across routine. So have a look at that. I was right proud of it, I was. And like a subscriber, like I said, uh, if I said that, I don't know if I said it, but if I did do that, and if I didn't, I've just said it. So there you go. Hi, I am Hector Mancha, and I want to share with you my new book of pickpocketing, The Wondrous World of Pickpocketing. New style of pickpocket, new modern, more psychological way to do pickpocket. I will show you magic techniques and pickpocketing techniques that looks like you will be a great thief. This was, is very exciting. I didn't know this was coming. And um, Vanishing Except I sent you a book and I got it. I was like, oh yeah, this ticking so many boxes here. I love pickpocketing and I'm a little bit in love with Hector Mancha as well. Uh, he, ever since watching his first DVD, My Silly Tricks, flawlessly placed, placed. I haven't seen the second one, ridiculous. Um, and seeing him at the session, I just really, I don't, there's a lot of magic I don't like watching. I'm a bit jaded, but I can watch him for hours and hours and hours. I just thought, I just think he's a joy to watch. Great performer, great thinker, world champion, deservedly. And I'm so glad that he's published this because I also love, as I said, pickpocketing. It's something that I play with, I perform, I always want to do more of. And if I don't do it for a while, I lose my bottle a little bit. But when the opportunity comes, I really get into it and I love it. And I've got the books, you know, I've got the, the professional stage pocket, uh, pickpocket by Ricky Dunn, classic book, great book. Um, got a couple of others, which I can't find worryingly, but there is somewhere. Theatrical pickpocketing, I think is one of them. Um, the DVDs, downloads, Chappie Brazil's watch deal video, Jacques Lesseur's watch deal download, really recommend Jacques Lesseur's watch, it's called, and it's great. Um, loads of stuff, and like I said, I haven't had the nerve to do the ties and things, but I've had a few watches, and I'm all over people's pockets, and I love it, and people love it. And that's what he says at the introduction to this, you know, people absolutely love it. There's something, there's almost a romance to pickpocketing. And I mean, there's, and, and this is called the wondrous world of pickpocket, and I think that's important. People are fascinated by the magic world, and they're fascinated by the pickpocketing world. It's, it's people, the minute you say it, people are really, really fascinated by it. So the fact you can do it, which I think you will be able to, if you can't yet after reading this book, is a real addition to, to your magic. And it's linked with magic. People know it's about misdirection. They know all that stuff. So it's, it's the, the fact you can add that is, I think priceless, it's wonderful. And, and I think you, if you're interested in that, you would do well to read this. But why? That's what I'm gonna tell you. Well, first of all, I was a little bit like, I, I opened the book and I'm gonna read that right now. I've only, I've only read it today, I've been all day with this book and I've done it from beginning to end. But I opened it up and Woody Aragon in the prologue uh, says this. Um, to start with, uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, Hector doesn't, extensively divulge the techniques behind his routines, though he cites the original text where he learned his skills later in the bibliography. And I, the minute I read that, I kind of went, oh no, I wanted the techniques. And then I thought about it and I went, but do I want the techniques? Because the, really, if you look at the Ricky Dunbar, you look at all the books, and actually, incidentally, I picked up this, um, this is Rod Hogg's uh, lecture notes, and it's very, very brief lecture notes, but there's some really good stuff on there, good introductory stuff. But, but I kind of, and, and, and Rod as well doesn't put, go into technique that, in that detail. And I realised I've got the techniques. The techniques are in themselves quite simple with pickpocketing. I mean, you know, really, you're, you're putting your finger and thumbs on a wallet and pulling it out. That's the technique. Of course, there's a little bit more to it. But physically, that's kind of what you're doing. The watch still has a bit more to it. But again, it's, <clears throat> it's quite intuitive. You know, you, you, you can kind of find your own if you don't do one of the classic ones. You just kind of feel it. All that stuff is, is the easiest bit of it, I think. Maybe the watch still 
you know, it takes a while to get smooth. But the rest of it, the actual action, there's nothing really going on much other than what goes on around it. And then, of course, you know, Hector says he's, uh, he's got if physical techniques aren't nearly as important as psychological techniques. And of course, that is what it's all about. And that's why we all get scared of it. You know, we all kind of go, I don't know when to do it. And I'm going to get, and I'm going to make sure I'm not, you know, I'm not caught. And that's what, you know, again, if I don't do it for a while, I get scared of. And then I started reading and kept on and carried on and carried on and carried on right till I got to the end. I didn't stop. And I have loved every second of this book. Hector's writing is the same as, as his performing. It's funny it's surreal sometimes he doesn't really hold back on quirky little things like he's got a recipe at the, at the back of it and then one bit he just says oh in one final tip never eat sugar it's poison just all this kind of weird stuff that makes it a, a really colorful read and I think that's important when learning something like this because it keeps us hooked and it keeps us reading and it makes us importantly want to go back to read more you know because when you've got a very dry book and don't get me wrong, I've got loads that are brilliant, but going back again and again, it can be quite a laborious process. And I didn't find that with this. Now, I'll briefly go through the contents. Like I have, like I said, I've read all of it, but I've, I've kind of done it pretty quickly. The real gold I found in this was pretty much on every page. But, you know, when he goes into the groundwork, the kind of preparation, the how you approach before you even pick someone's pocket, what you're looking for, your attitude, all that stuff. Yes, I've read it before, but it felt there was a freshness to it, which felt like I was reading something new. The rules of pickpocketing and uh, one of them being, <clears throat> I won't go through them all, but one of them being give the stuff back. It seems obvious. When I was once pickpocketing, um, uh, uh, it wasn't a paid gig. I, I was at uh, the Arctic Monkeys after show. Oh, what's that? Oh, it's a name I've just dropped. Uh, Arctic Monkeys after show party. I pickpocketed the uncle of one of the Arctic Monkeys. Uh, I was very drunk. It wasn't a professional gig. We were just having a laugh. Got home, got up in the morning, checked in my pockets, had his wallet, his bus pass, <laughs> everything in there. So I sheepishly had to go back and give this poor bloke his stuff back so he could actually get on a bus you know, and buy stuff, which was embarrassing. But there are more nuanced ones, stuff you wouldn't necessarily think of really really important then he's got the steels that the illustrations are quite simple pencil drawings but the attention to detail they've even got is wearing his sandals but very clear you know the watch steel technique if you look at those drawings and you go they show me everything I need to know they're lovely I really like it they're kind of old school uh, and I didn't feel like I needed anything else so even though it says he doesn't go into techniques he kind of does enough for you to completely get going with it I don't think you need more than that and the drawings show, you know, where he's placing himself. If you're stealing a tie, you know, it's the first time I've seen that. And I might be wrong, because I could go back to the older books, but I just felt everything made sense. Of course you can get the tie. It's not as hard as you think. And the glasses, and he gives you simple ways of stealing the glasses. So you think taking them off someone's face, but if you don't want to do that, how can you get them in other ways? So I, I again, read all that and thought, why aren't I doing more of this? I really need to go out and do so much more of this. And then practice tips, really important. How to practice using a mannequin, the pros and cons of that, which I have. He names his mannequin. My mannequin is called Stephen, but not with a V, with a PH. I'm not a narcissist. That's my joke I always say. It's not very funny, is it? But <laughs> I quite like it. And Stephen hasn't got a head anymore either because I chucked it away by accident. So there's that. Um, and of course, the, I think the most important bit of this are the, all the tricks he gives you to do with the steels and this is just great and i'm not saying it's the first person to do this ricky dunn has a load of tricks in there but these tricks are great even without the steels they're just banging tricks i'm just going to pick out a couple there's loads and they're all great but there's a lovely one where you take someone's wallet and you show the audience their wallet and put it back and they think you've put back their wallet but you've put back your wallet and you've you're using all these little subtleties which they don't know are happening but they kind of feel the wallet's still in their pocket but it's not their wallet but they don't know that and there's a kind of way you place the wallet to show your hands empty and afterwards there's a routine using the invisible deck one of my favorite routines is using a, a kind of ring in wallet routine now i do a ring in wallet but this has made me go no i need to do it like that even without the steel so the routines the tricks all those are brilliant he shows his uh, shares his finale of the routine he does where he does a kind of 20th century silks you know the awful bra gag 
he does a version like that with someone's underwear, which of course is really funny, and you can imagine him getting away with it. And I think it's less problematic than the bra gag, you know, way less actually, I know it is, um, because how he dis describes it, using a simple gimmick, you know, a couple of these routines use Himba wallets, but it gives you alternatives if you don't want to use this, and this uses a gimmick, but it gives you an alternative if you don't want to use the gimmick. Uh, and you take that and you go, I could just imagine that getting 10 minutes of laughs. It's, just wonderful and at the end he kind of ties it all up really nicely with some really kind of funny kind of ending thoughts <coughs> excuse me now those tricks yes you will take some of them and do them there's a lovely actually the, the one with the himbo wallet with the corner you know you do a corner and a card switch is great just such a lovely trick it uses the, the idea of the lights turning off at the time when you're going to steal it so yeah anyway loads of that going on loads of premises you, you'll just you'll love it every one of them but what it did at the end is, when I was reading them, I could imagine very, very clearly where those moments would be that I would put into my existing routines. Because what he does, he gives you the routine, and then at the end he says, this is where you do the steal. And you go, well, I do kind of that in my routine. So even though I do a different routine, it's training me how to make use of those opportunities when I could steal. And then you start going, this isn't as difficult as I think it is. You've got to be bold and your technique has to be down. It takes practice, but it feels doable after reading a book like this. And that is exactly what I love about it. You don't come out of that going, oh, this is going to be really scary. You've, you know, the tie, yeah, I could do that. You, do you know what I mean? And I think that inspiration is what I love getting out of some magic books. And it's the, the thing that is lacking, sadly, in rather a lot of them. Now, pe people say about pickpocketing, and I tend to agree, that you can only really learn it by doing. And yes, of course, but you do have to have these things in your head. And you can't read this book and go out and start, well, some people might if they're, if they're relaxed enough, which is really important. But you can not going to read this and just go out and be able to do it all. But what it will give you is the confidence, but also the shortcut. Because he's been doing this for a long time, especially in that groundwork, you know, you read a bit about the groundwork. He's going to give you things that you wouldn't necessarily think about that will just cut months, arguably years, of your progress with this. And I, I just, I'm so glad a modern pickpocketing book has come out, written by someone contemporary that's not really dry and, and is a genuine help for those of us who are fascinated by, by the art of pickpocketing, pickpocketing as I am. So highly recommended. Absolutely love it. Love Hector Manch's stuff. Pick it up. Uh, thank you to Vanishing Inc. for sending it to me. The, uh, incidentally, not incidentally, actually far more than incidentally, the uh, illustrations are by Michal Kaczaulek. Oh, I I mm. um, that one, uh, who does a lot of illustrations, but they are beautiful. I mean, it just looks, it's, a, it's a lovely book. And, um, and of course, it's the guys from Vanishing Inc. have put it all together and, and they're making the most beautiful magic books in the world. Well, along with a couple of other people, but... Uh, I think mean, you're going to be very happy with it. There it is. Thank you very much. Like and subscribe. After this, go and check out onlinemagic.co and have a great one. Any comments, questions, do put them below, all right? Take care. Bye.